So I just went and I'm starting to attach wires again and here's I, I went and took pictures again uh, with my smartphone when I started to take off wires and here you see I've just uh, looked at the pictures and went and put these two back on and then I'm just going to keep on finding all my pictures of the wires and uh, placing them back exactly where my pictures told me to told me to put them. Um, I would have marked these with tape maybe because they're both of course coming over from the side so it might not matter but I do have a picture of both these whites but then it's like they're both the same so it would have been better to have marked them before I, I uh, brought them. They might again, they might end up going on the same thing. I'll just have to look back on my photos. So, anyhow, that's what I'm going to do next is just uh, start finding wires and reattaching them to their pegs according to the pictures. Okay, you can see this wire again comes around and uh, attaches here between the red and the green. Then around the other side of the motor here, I've See, we're starting to put the uh, attach the uh, carburetor on, just uh, tightening these bolts on either side. The fresh gaskets in there, and um, and we've just attached these two wires down here as well to this little unit. And um, so, uh, just to make sure when you're putting your uh, carburetor units on here, uh, make sure you slide this in when you put it in. The, uh, into the, the automatic choke, the solenoid thing, or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, and, but because we didn't, which just means taking off this bracket here and sliding it back in and repositioning it. And then, of course, there's that tall. This green wire is going to come wrap through and attach onto that uh, bolt right there. All right, we've got all the grounding stuff here all attached now. So I'm just going to put this uh, portion here onto uh, here on the linkage or whatever this is. <laughs> like my terminology, you guys are going to be driven nuts by what I say. Call these things. Anyways, I'm going to yeah, just be attached to that. Once I attach this here, there's actually a little retaining clip. I'll just grab it. It's right, right here. This retaining clip, it just goes into this little. There's a little slot there that hold that in place so make sure you don't lose that and just mark, again, mark, take pictures and mark all these things off as you take it apart in the first place all right so we've gone ahead we've attached the gas lines again and uh, these aren't attached yet because I first attached the uh, these it's gear and stuff from the, the front the throttle and things like that cables but first I had to attach them here and down here there's little uh, rings that they attach to so it holds it in place and um, got this bracket we popped on and uh, yeah and then we'll just go around the other side now and um, and attach the uh, last of the wires and then we'll look at the flywheel getting that on and uh, I'm pretty sure that I, I'm not going to attempt the timing and everything myself I'll t probably take uh, the engine out of the boat mechanic to get to all this uh, properly uh, adjusted but you never know I might be stubborn and take the risk of trying myself which may be really stupid so we'll see I don't have a timing scope for one so I'll have to borrow that from a friend if I go ahead and do that but I know that there's you don't want to mess this up because if you mess this up and you're gonna um, have the the pistons detonate at the wrong time and stuff and of course ruin the engine so Okay, just want to make a note here. I put the flywheel on, but back at the beginning when I took the flywheel off, and that's a pain in the butt for a lot of people. And I happened to go, go be at a garage sale that day and got this unit here. Basically, you tighten these these bolts down, and then you tighten this on, of course. And what I had was, it was still, even as I tightened this, it was pretty amazing trying to get that uh, to to um, to get this flywheel off. Because of course, it's been there since it was made in 1989. That flywheel and torqued on and stuck we even rusted down a little and uh, what I did first which was an evil thing to do before I use this one and oh, I should well, I should finish my conversation here in that this um, once it's tightened down it wouldn't come off so what I had was I had my daughter as I um, as uh, I had this being tightened down it was totally cinched down and so I had her pushing on it with a wrench and then I tapped on this lightly as she was doing that and that's what caused the snap off. You don't want to be hitting this very hard 
because you also got right through the crankshaft all those bearings and you don't want to wreck them and damage them. But another thing I did wrong, if I quickly can, I'll just pop this, this unit off. So use one of these, don't use the other thing that I'm going to show you right now because that was, uh, made, I made a mistake there. And that is, uh, a lot of you have one of these fabulous pulling tools, right? And you can switch it around, but I basically um, took, took these, you know, and I attached them on each, uh, each edge like that, all three of them, and put, uh, you know what I mean, you've seen these before, attach that over there, but as you can see, what do you, what you notice here is this crack, and, uh, and basically as I, I cinched up on, on this tool, this separator tool, it, uh, the tooth bent and snapped this part off, and I've been a bit of an idiot here, and I've insisted on putting it back on with JB Weld, but this is spins at such a high RPM that this uh, and this needs to be per uh, that this could put potentially fly off, and that would send the, this out of balance, and of course go right down the crankshaft and wreck all the bearings. So don't use one of these. I'm probably going to end up having to buy another flywheel. Um, you'll notice even if you look underneath the flywheel when you take it off. They have actually drilled holes underneath here to uh, to set and balance this, just to get it perfectly balanced. So that's why I put this back on here with a bunch of JB Weld, but uh, it's, I'm taking a risk there, because this could fly off. And if it does fly, if it could fly off like a bullet, go right through the cowling of the motor, who knows? But uh, you know, I'm, take, I'm taking a risk there, I'll be honest with you. But I've gotten all the wires now reattached, and uh, the linkage here, and like I said, I think I'm just going to take it now and get the timing uh, timing all done uh, from a mechanic and I think I'll have a go with that. I'd love to do everything on my own but there's some things maybe I shouldn't fool around with. After I received my outboard back from the marine mechanic who did the timing and adjusted the linkage for me, he instructed me to run the first 25 liters of gas through the motor at a 25 to 1 fuel to oil ratio to ensure it had plenty of lubrication for its initial run. After that I could return to a 50 to 1 ratio. He also said for the first tank not to take it past half throttle, just to give it time for the parts to seat properly and avoid damage from overheating and other factors. I followed his instructions and enjoyed the rest of the summer boating with the motor running smoothly with extra power. All the best with your boating adventures.